Quantum Entanglement When two particles are entangled, there exists a seemingly magical link between them that can be difficult for physics to understand. No matter how far apart they are, they are still connected, such that one particle feels what happens to the other particle. In simple terms, quantum entanglement is the situation wherein certain aspects of one particle in an entangled pair depend on the aspects of the other particle, regardless of how far apart they are. Another good way of looking at it is when you have a special dice and that whenever you roll it, the same number also appears on your friend's dice if they roll theirs. A mysterious connection exists that the best minds in physics can't explain. It challenges everything science knows about space and time, yet it happens naturally in our world, among atoms of living creatures, or even inanimate objects. Quantum superposition Quantum superposition involves an object being in multiple states simultaneously, until we observe the object's actual state. It's like how all jigsaw puzzle pieces can be in multiple states because they can fit into any part of the picture, but it's only when you observe the pieces you know where they belong. The perfect example of an experiment that uses this concept concept is Schrodinger's cat. This experiment involves a cat placed inside a sealed box. Its fate is dependent on a dangerous particle in a superposition. The catch here is that no one knows if the particle killed the cat or if it survived. Only when someone opens the box will the cat's fate be revealed. So before opening the box, the cat is dead and alive, putting it in a superposition state. In short, anything can be true or false until we observe the world around us. Similarly, a particle in quantum superposition can exist in multiple states until it is observed. Returning to the jigsaw puzzle analogy, we only see where the pieces fit until we observe them and the bigger picture. Quantum physics tells us that everything in the world is possible until the moment of observation. Heisenberg's Uncertainty Principle You're in a scenario where you're trying to catch a mosquito that has been bugging you for a while. The more you focus on its position, the less you know how fast it is. Similarly, if you focus on its speed, you won't be able to observe its exact position. Heisenberg's Uncertainty Principle operates in the same way. Heisenberg's uncertainty principle states that it is impossible to simultaneously and precisely know the position, speed, and direction of a quantum particle due to the limitations in measurement accuracy. This principle is like a balancing act. It's rooted in the observer effect, which states that observing an object will change its behavior. So if we measure a tortoise moving at 0.5 miles per hour, we know its momentum, but not its exact position, because it is now in a constant state of motion. But if we measure its exact location, we won't be able to get its exact speed, because we are now focused on where it is, rather than how fast it is going. The uncertainty principle is Heisenberg's way of telling us that there is no absolute certainty in pinning down particles' exact position and momentum in the quantum world, where uncertainty rules over certainty. Quantum Tunneling in the quantum world, particles can do something impossible, pass through impenetrable barriers. Classical physics says this is impossible because one particle can only occupy one space at a time. How does a particle pass through a barrier if that's the case? That's the principle of quantum tunneling. Think of it as similar to how you try to walk through a closed door, but suddenly find yourself on the other side without trying to open it. But it's not like you found a secret passage. Similarly, particles cannot access a passage that can penetrate barriers. But the quantum quantum world tells us that these particles have a unique teleportation ability to do what seems impossible. The universe says, hey, I'll give these particles the ability to sneak through walls, even though you thought they were impenetrable. But this is not because of a mystical ability. Instead, it's due to the wave-like nature of particles, which allows them to simultaneously exist on the other side of an impenetrable barrier. The catch is that quantum tunneling is less likely to happen the higher an object's mass is, making it unlikely for objects larger than a particle to pass through barriers. So you might want to forget about teleportation, because it's unlikely to happen anytime soon. Quantum computing Regular computers are capable of two things. They can either be on or off. But let's say there's a quantum computer that has superpowers, in the sense that it can be on, off, or both on and off simultaneously. That's the basic principle behind quantum computing. In the regular world, computers exchange bits that can only be zero or one. However, in the quantum world, computers exchange quantum bits, or qubits, which can exist in multiple states simultaneously because of quantum superposition. So these bits can 
can be 0, 1, or both 0 and 1 at the same time. In this case, superposition allows quantum computers to process information much faster than regular computers. They can do multiple tasks simultaneously while taking on multiple routes, allowing them to solve the most complex problems until they reach a solution. Of course, quantum computers use quantum mechanics to solve problems that even supercomputers aren't capable of. The double slit experiment. The double slit experiment can be explained in a situation where you have a small cannon that can shoot tiny marbles toward two slits, and there's a wall behind the slits. In classical physics, you're supposed to see two bands on the wall because the marbles are supposed to split and pass through the two slits. However, the double slit experiment has a different result. In this experiment, interference patterns that can only be exhibited by waves will appear in the wall behind the slits when particles are shot through double slits. But how is this possible? If you recreate the same experiment using the example we used about the marbles, you will get two bands on the wall. However, for particles, ripples will appear, as if the particles behave like waves instead of solid balls. The double slit experiment suggests that particles have a dual nature in that they can be solid or act like waves. But the trick here is that the particles only exhibit this behavior when they are shot through slits. It's like a magician pulls off the old switcheroo within the slits and changes the particles into waves. This experiment shows that things in the quantum world don't always behave as classical physics tells them to. Particles can have a dual nature in that they can exhibit wave-like behaviors under certain circumstances. The exact reason for this behavior is the subject of ongoing studies. This is why the double slit experiment only supports the theory, but does not prove it. Wave particle duality. In the quantum realm, particles can showcase a dual nature. A particle behaves like a particle when observed, but when unobserved, it can display properties similar to a wave, exhibiting interference patterns. The challenging part here is that particles and waves are supposed to behave differently according to classical physics. However, in the quantum realm, particles have the dual properties of both a particle and a wave. Experiments like the double slit experiment showcase this duality, but it's not as if the baseball in your hand can suddenly turn into a wave. It's much more complex than that, and rooted in the unique and uncertain aspects of the quantum world. The uncertainty principle also plays a role here. Depending on our observation, the innate uncertainty of particles in the quantum world contributes to their dual nature, making them exhibit particle-like or wave-like properties. This ultimately means that particles, when observed in the quantum world, are versatile and can play different roles depending on the situation and how you observe them. Quantum Field Theory In the quantum field theory, at every single time, Time, there exist different types of fields that we cannot see. These fields can be magnetic fields, electric fields, or gravitational fields. All these fields have unique properties that have different effects on certain objects or particles. When these fields interact, they create scenarios where particles behave in various ways. Simply, when you toss a pebble into a pond, it creates ripples through the water. That pebble is a particle. Every particle has a quantum field, represented by the ripples created by a pebble thrown into a pond. When these particles interact with one one another, the fields interact as well. So if you throw two pebbles into a pond simultaneously and close to one another, you will see their ripples either turning into a wave or canceling each other out. But instead of a pond, the quantum field theory appears more like a dance floor. When the fields generated by the particles interact, the particles will start to act like dancers twirling on the dance floor, spinning, jumping, and moving around from one place to another. The quantum field theory tries to unify the movements created by all the particles interacting. Acting. It provides a framework often used in quantum mechanics and explains the quantum world and the different things happening in the most miniature observable world of atoms and particles. The Observer Effect Say you wanted to take pictures with your camera after observing a particular scene. For example, you want to capture a scene of two lovers kissing, but when you look at the photo, the scene changes into two people fighting each other. This is similar to how the observer effect works. In the quantum world, observing particles can influence their actions. On the other hand, in the everyday world, observing things for what they are doesn't change their nature or what they're doing. But in quantum physics, particles are shy enough to change their behavior when they know you are observing them. It's like someone is invisible only whenever another person is looking at them. Observation is commonly supposed to be a neutral act that doesn't change the outcome of an experiment or any observable phenomena. A house will always be burning if you observe the flames turning wood into ash. In the quantum world, however, observing particles' actions can change how they act, and there's a reason why this makes sense. Picture this. You aren't observing anything in a pitch-black room that's too dark for anyone
one to see, but when you turn your flashlight on, the room changes from dark to semi-lit simply because you used a tool to try to observe your surroundings. You can also picture it as putting a thermometer in hot water. Because the thermometer is colder than the water in the pot, adding it to measure the water's temperature will slightly alter the water's temperature compared to what it was before. That is basically how the observer effect works. Observation can change the behavior of atoms because measuring tools can already have a huge effect on the small events happening in the quantum world, where even a speck of dust is already an entire planet larger than an atom.